Hi there, my name is Will and I'm a developer advocate at Kestra. Today I'm going to be walking you through the new sync flows task as part of the new Git plugin in 0.17. In the previous video, we covered how you can push your flows to a Git repository. Today I'm going to show you how you can sync those to make sure that Kestra is always in sync with your Git repository. Let's jump in. Now in order to make this work, we're going to need to make sure that we've got a Git repository on GitHub with our flows as well as a GitHub personal access token. If you followed the first First part of the episode, you'll have this already set up and ready to go. So if you haven't done that, check out that first and then come back here. Assuming that you've done that all, we can now jump straight into using the new sync flows task. Now, very similar to the push flows, you need to just specify the username of your GitHub account, the password, so in this case, my secret, and the URL of your repository. After that, you then specify the branch that you want to use. In this case, I want to use the main branch. I want to target what namespace, so it's gonna move all of those flows into the Git namespace, regardless of what they are in the repository. I can also specify where it will be in that repository, so all of my flows are inside of a folder called flows. Let's have a look at that. As we can see on GitHub, all of my flows are inside of this flows folder. I've also got a subdirectory here called tutorial with some extra flows in, but we'll get to that shortly. For this quick example, we're gonna use a dry run so it won't sync anything until we're happy, but it will tell us what it will do. So let's have a look at that. And as we can see here, it's listed out those three files that were inside of our Git repository. We can also see them inside of the outputs tab here as well. Let's set dry run to false and sync these to see them inside of Kestra. And as we can see here, it has added them all into Kestra. So if we head over to flows and go to our Git namespace, we'll be able to see those three flows like we saw on GitHub. I also wanna sync the child namespaces. So there's this subdirectory here called tutorial. I wanna be able to sync that as well. So all we've got to do is head over to Kestra and add the includes child namespaces property and set that to true. By default, that is false, which is why we've not seen these additional flows be synced. And when I set this to true and execute my flow, we'll see that we'll get five files appear inside of here. We'll see that three of them have stayed unchanged, but we've got those two inside of the tutorial folder that are being added. And we can see that by heading over to our Git namespace, and we can now see that those have successfully been added. This is great, but part of the perk of being able to keep Kestra in sync with your Git repository is that you wanna make sure they're always in sync. So we can set up a trigger here to make sure that they are automatically synced and we don't even have to lift a finger. Let's do this simply by adding a schedule trigger that will run this once an hour to make sure that our Kestra instance is up to date with the Git repository. By simply adding this trigger, this is now going to just keep everything in sync. However, this is probably going to end up running a lot when there are no changes. And so we can actually make this a little bit more efficient by adding a webhook that will connect directly to GitHub and GitHub will ping our webhook every single time something is pushed, which means it will then keep Kestra in sync. Here I've added our webhook. It's got a key called A, B, C, D, E, F, G. If I now head over to GitHub, I can add this webhook there. Heading over to settings of our repository, I can scroll down and find webhook. And this is where I can add my webhook. Once I've authenticated, I can put in my payload URL, which will be the URL for your instance in Kestra. If you haven't got Kestra hosted and you're running it on localhost, you'll need to use something like ngrot to be able to tunnel it to the web. Put the URL that that will provide. But for this example, we will put our localhost example in. And as you can see here, our URL is api slash v1 slash execution slash webhook. Then the name of our namespace, which is system, the ID of our flow, and then the secret. And because the secret is part of the URL, we do not need to put it into the secret box here. Once you've done that, you can head over to just the push event and then press add webhook. And doing this, assuming your Kestra instance is hosted, means that every time something is pushed to your Git repository, it will trigger Kestra to run our sync flow. Hopefully you found that useful and this will help keep your Kestra instance up to date with your version control. If you have any questions or feedback for us, let us know in the comments below or you can join our Slack community. In the next part, we'll be walking through how you can push your namespace files to Git as well.